Welcome back. Today we're doing a couch makeover. It also includes two chairs. So it's kind of like a living room set makeover. Yeah. To give you a little bit of backstory on this furniture, my wife and I recently moved into her late grandparents' house. They already have a set of furniture in the garage that I'm going to redo for us to keep and use in our living room. But this Victorian style set, it wasn't being used, it was kind of just for decoration. We love these pieces, but it didn't make sense for us to hold on to these because they're not super comfortable and we want our living room to be cozy where you want to like lay around and watch TV and this just didn't do it for us. I'm currently in the middle of doing a bunch of different projects for Goose Feathers, which if you didn't see the last video, it was me making over their, uh, their gigantic retail windows. So um, you should go see that video too. Along with redoing their windows, we wanted to kind of create a little sitting area because we want to cozy up the place. We want to make you feel like you can hang out for a while. I just knew that this would be a perfect opportunity to use these furniture pieces and still kind of let them be mine, just kind of like loan them out. So I guess in a way I'm kind of hoarding, but it's working out. So, oh well. So with all that said, let's get into the project. Since we are doing so many different creative sort of display things for the store, we're trying to work with a budget, so we decided to go the really, really DIY route and paint the fabric. I know how that might sound, but I promise the fabric amazingly did not turn out crunchy or feel painted whatsoever. I think it all came down to the mixture that I used to dye the couch. I basically just used two products. The paint that I used for the fabric was this DIY chalk paint by Debbie's Design Diary. She has a YouTube channel, which I highly recommend. She also has two videos painting couches. Of her two videos, one is painting a kind of velvety fabric, so she does end up keeping that really soft. And then in the other one, she ends up giving a couch a sort of leather, pleather type of look. If you're gonna do this project, I definitely recommend watching those videos too. And maybe even doing a little bit more research so that way you're super comfortable with why you're making the decisions of what you're gonna do if that makes sense. I definitely recommend watching her videos, but I did make a couple changes to how I did it. I started off with a, a giant mason jar. I knew I wanted to make a lot of this mixture. As you can see, I have about this much left, so keep that in mind when I kind of show you all of the ratios and everything that I used. Here's my recipe. In total, I used 16 plus eight. Twenty-four ounces of paint. I also used 16 ounces of fabric medium. I poured all of this into my mason jar. And then I filled up all of these containers with water and put that in my mason jar as well. So I kind of went with like a 50% water, 50% mediums and paints. Because ultimately you do want to water down your paint significantly so that way it kind of seeps into the fabric and it doesn't sit on top. While I'm on the subject of materials, the only other materials I used were chunky yarn for my trim and you'll also need some sandpaper later on. And after a while it does kind of settle and separate so anytime you walk away from your project and you come back I would definitely recommend giving it another little shake or stir to get all of those minerals mixed around and even. Oh. You will also need a spray bottle of water. To start off with, you are going to want to spritz your fabric with water. Essentially what this is doing is breaking that surface tension of the fabric of all those little dry fibers. And this is going to allow your paint to really seep into the fabric when it's applied. I would suggest experimenting with the concentration of your paint mixture. Originally when I started off, I used about one part paint to one part fabric medium to about three parts water. And then I realized that that was probably a little bit too watered down. You do want the paint to be thinned out enough to just kind of seep into the fabric, but it can be too thin and give you more work to have to apply more layers because it's not concentrated enough. And you just paint 
and paint and paint. I just kind of did this over the course of a couple evenings. If you want to make this go a little bit faster, definitely grab a friend. In the end, I ended up doing three to four coats depending on how much of the original kind of brownish, yellowish color came through. If your couch has a lot of tufting like this one does, I do recommend sort of spreading those pieces apart and really... You definitely don't want to sit on your couch and then as the fabric kind of pulls apart from itself, see your original fabric. Once I was done painting, I went through and pulled off all of the original trim. Thank you. 
So we decided to paint all of the wooden frame white. For this, I used Fusion Mineral paint in the color Casement. Casement. I love this paint. It's so thick. These are actually probably two of my favorite paints that I've used on furniture. You might would think that since this is painted furniture, it's going to end up giving the fabric a kind of hard, crunchy feel, but that's not the case at all. Since we took all the extra steps to sort of soften the paint with the fabric medium and thin it out and do it in thin coats, it really just kind of dyes the fabric. Ours did have a little bit of like pilling on the surface of the fabric, again because it was so old, the little pilling pieces did tend to kind of hold on to some of that extra paint and those did kind of give it a kind of rough texture so this is when i went ahead and just sanded all the fabric this did a couple things this softened the fabric even more so in the end i think that the fabric was softer than what it was when we began And this also kind of revealed a little bit more of those flower details in this particular fabric, which I think made it look even more authentic. It almost looks like a combination of like an old denim, but also like a patterned sort of curtain. I don't have a truck of my own, so I did have to jump on the opportunity for when my parents came to town to have them help me transport the furniture to the store with their truck so I ended up kind of doing the final details 
at the store. And this basically just included adding the trim and also sanding any other parts as I went along that I thought needed to be softened even more. Yeah. I did kind of go back and forth a lot about the trim. I tried a couple different types of ribbon. The only ones that they kind of have at the store that are reasonably priced are the like quarter inch width ribbon. And it just wasn't substantial enough for the furniture. The other thing I tried was braiding macrame cord. One strand of the macrame cord just wasn't thick enough to add that kind of finishing detail around all of the fabric. So I thought maybe braiding it could kind of turn it into a sort of trim of its own. But this looked a little too nautical for what we were going for. I wanted there to be a kind of weird or like funky element to the couch and I think this was the perfect touch. And whatever trim you end up going with, all you have to do, it's got a little tail, all you have to do is uh, hot glue it down. Once the trim was added, we finished it up by sanding it down a little bit more, and that was it. As you can see, this is a very colorful store already. I think this fits into the store so perfectly, and I can't wait to bring in other furniture pieces to really get this sitting area even more cozy and homey. This has been in the store, I think, for a couple weeks now, and we've been pleasantly surprised that people are actually sitting in it and getting comfortable and hanging out. One of the local artists that made these fabric pumpkins also made these candy corn pillows. And you might can see behind the couch, we spread out all of my flowers in this sort of farmer's market style play. Can't even believe that I'm, I have to say this, but I've already started making Christmas flowers, so. We're so happy with how this turned out. I'm definitely gonna use this technique of painting fabric in the future. It's so convenient and it's a really great way to save fabric if you like the texture and you just wanna change the color. We've had a lot of compliments of customers coming in and saying that both the window display and the sitting area looks very anthropology, which was a pleasant surprise. I didn't even consider that when we started doing this stuff, but I'll take it.
we really love how it turned out, but let me know what you think. Leave a comment below with your thoughts or with any kind of ideas or projects that you'd like to see in the future. If you want to continue to see projects from me, then you can subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me on social media. Really, literally, anywhere. If you want to take it a step further, you can also find me over on Patreon, where I have a couple tier options that I think you might like. That's it for me this week. So, stay safe, go make something, and I'll see you around. Bye. Ugh, my battery died. Okay. And, as you can see, I have... Ooh, please don't spill this. Start off with, you are going to want to spray paint your fabric. Nope. in whatever area of my house I want to be. I don't care what frame I'm in. You see this? I have to deal with this every day. This attitude. Does this remind you of your belly buttons? You're just saying that because you're on camera.